Okay, brothers and sisters, we are going to get started. So if you've just joined, we are going to start in a comfortable seated position. So this can be done on the floor if you're comfortable sitting on your yoga mat, or you can sit up on a chair as well. Then we're going to do a little bit of standing, come to the knees. So if you are coming to your knees, this is where your towel is handy if you're not comfortable kneeling. And we're going to finish on the floor, sort of working into the hips and the heart. So um, take it easy. If something doesn't feel right in your body, you are your best teacher and guide. So I can only guide you through the movements, but you know how it feels. So do as little or as much as feels comfortable for you. Let's get started. So I'm just going to come to a seat too, so that I can guide you from here. But again, as I said, you can sit on the floor nice and comfortably. Just sitting up with a nice straight spine. Maybe resting your hands somewhere on your thighs. And if you're sitting in a chair, bring your feet to the floor. So just gently closing your eyes. So we just take these first few moments as time just to drop in and notice what have you brought to the practice this morning? So what sensations make up your physical experience? So just checking in with yourself energetically this morning. Is the energy feeling a little sluggish or high and vibrant or something in between. So just checking in. Just checking in with yourself mentally and emotionally. How are you doing right now? And then rest your awareness on your breath. So just noticing firstly, where do you feel the breath the most right now? What is the quality of your inhalation and the quality of your exhalation? <clears throat> Without trying to change it or alter it, what is the natural rhythm of your breath right now? And so we consciously follow your breath for the next four rounds of breath. And a round is an inhale, a pause, an exhalation, and a pause. So once you finish those four rounds of breath, just take a moment to set an intention just for the next hour for this practice. And we'll just allow our hands or arms to rest down by your sides. If you're on a chair, just let them hang loosely or maybe fingertips to the floor if you're sitting on the floor. So wait for your next inhalation, turn your palms out and reach them up and overhead and then take your gaze to look up as well. And then as you exhale, turn the palms away and slowly release the arms down by your side. So completely let go of your arms before in the pause between your breaths, you can turn the palms out, inhale, reach up, look up. In the pause, turn your hands, and as you exhale, arms lower, and then your head comes back to the center. We're just going to follow this three more times with your breath. So you start with the breath. Inhale, reach the arms up. So the movement follows. Wait for your exhalation, and arms slowly lower down completely. Let the arms be heavy. Release the shoulders completely. 
and the pause. You can turn your hands in, how are reaching up? And then exhale down. So it's as if the breath is moving your arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale down. This time, inhale, reach your arms up. So we're going to keep them overhead, interlace the hands, and then just gently press the palms out. So you're reaching the palms up towards the ceiling. So as you do this, see if you can bring the head of the arm bones back down into the shoulders. Take a breath in, reach up. And as you exhale, release your right arm down by your side. Turn your left palm into the midline. Inhale, reach up through the left fingertips. And as you exhale, we're going to bend slightly to the right hand side. So we're going to begin to access the left side of your body here. So just turn your head to make it comfortable for your neck. So you could look down towards the floor. If you're sitting on the floor, you could reach your right fingertips out to the side here. If you're on a chair, just let the arm hang heavily. And again, make the neck comfortable. So either looking out into the room, up towards your elbow or down towards the floor. On the next inhale, we reach both arms up. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up. So even though you're pressing the palms to the ceiling, bring the shoulders back down the back just a little bit here. Inhale, reach up again. Exhale, lower the left hand, turn the right palm into the midline. Inhale, reach through your fingertips here. And as you exhale, bend over to the left hand side. So you only need to go as far as you can begin to feel sensation along the right side of the body. And if you're on the floor again, you can walk your hands out. That can support you and help you go a little bit deeper. Again, make sure the neck is comfortable so we're not adding any tension here. So just turn the head to an appropriate position for your neck. And just breathe into the sensations you're feeling here. Inhale, reach both arms up. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up. Just one more time. Inhale, look up, and as you exhale, let the arms relax down by your side. And let the arms be heavy, completely release the shoulders. So now we're going to work a little bit into your hands. So just begin to rotate nice and slowly. So even closing your eyes and really feeling into the movement. Sometimes the symbols of movements in yoga are the more difficult to stay present in. So let that be your intention that you stay present with what's showing up and then changing direction. Nice and slowly again, feeling into the movement. Notice where there's any sticky points or does it move freely? And then on the next inhale, we'll stretch out the hands like we're pressing them against a wall here spreading your fingers and then as you exhale make a fist and bring your knuckles down towards the floor so you stretch into the top of your hands and the wrists inhale stretch out through the fingers exhale make a fist and knuckles down two more like this inhale exhale just one more inhale exhale now we're just going to shake the hands out. Reaching your arms out at shoulder height, we'll take our fingertips to our shoulders here. And begin to draw little circles with your elbows. So starting with really small circles, both together if you can. Just feeling into that. Notice what parts of your body are moving here. So you can do one at a time or both together keeping it nice and gentle and slowly begin to increase in size. So you're really feeling into the movement. If it's comfortable, you can close your eyes. <clears throat> and then we're looking for your full range of movement into the shoulders this morning. So just exploring your edge, what it feels like. And then changing direction. So we'll start with the big circles in the other direction. 
and then just slowly decreasing and then just coming to stillness. On the next exhalation, we're gonna focus on opening the upper back and the back of the heart center. As you exhale and squeeze your elbows together. <clears throat> and as you inhale, you can take the elbows back and lift the heart. So make sure you're not throwing the back of the head back here. There's length in the back of the neck, but the gaze is moving upwards. So as you exhale, you squeeze the elbows together, draw your belly in, <clears throat> excuse me, chin to chest. And as you inhale, you're going to open up the arms and the heart and gaze up towards the sun, which is just where the ceiling meets your wall. So without throwing the head back, I'm sorry, I'm just going to admit somebody here. So exhale, you're opening up the upper back, the upper thoracic spine, the back of the heart. And then inhale, you're opening the front of the heart, front of the shoulders, the chest. We're just gonna do two more like this. Exhale, draw the belly in, chin to chest as you bring the elbows together. Inhale, lift the heart. And then just release the arms down by your side for a moment, just pause. Relax the shoulders completely. Take a breath in as you let them, <coughs> excuse me, through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. So just allow it to fall. It doesn't matter how far it moves. Just explore your edge here. Let the left arm be really heavy. You can even walk the left fingertips away from the body to go a little bit deeper into the left side of the neck. I'm just gonna move this incense. <coughs> So really focusing on the left side of the neck. Just noticing what shows up there. And just breathing in and out of the sensations you're feeling. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper, you can take your right hand and just rest it on your head above your ear. But we're not pushing here. We're just using the natural weight of our arm to deepen the stretch into the left side of the neck. You can also lift the chin just a little bit upwards towards the ceiling to go a little bit deeper. Let's just see how this feels in your body this morning. And then releasing the arm. And on the inhale, lift up. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, lift up through the crown of the head. And as you exhale, we'll drop the left ear towards the left shoulder. So this may feel very different, <clears throat> excuse me. So just allow the head to be heavy. We're not pushing or pressing. Again, you have that option to reach the right fingertips away from the body. And you also have the option of taking your left hand, resting it on the head just above the ear, just lightly resting it there. Again, there's no pushing or pressing. We're just softening into our edges. So you arrive into the sensations and as much as you can soften and breathe here. And releasing the hand down. On the next inhale, lift the head up, crown of the head to the ceiling, exhale, chin to chest. Keep your chin down here. And we're gonna to begin to draw a necklace from shoulder to shoulder with the chin. So you can bring the chin all the way over to your right shoulder and back to center, let the head be heavy. Take your time and move over to the left shoulder. So as slow as you can, really feeling into what showing up in the back of the neck, maybe the sides of the neck as well, come all the way up over to the right side and then drop the head slowly down. So you're releasing it as you're circling it. Good. 
Now you can continue to create a full circle with the head, but only if that feels right for your neck and that you don't have any neck issues. So if you have any bulging discs around the neck or anything, just keep to this very gentle movement here. But if it, only if it feels right, you can slowly allow the head to circle. And if it makes you feel dizzy, then stop, just come back to center, take a rest. So we're just gonna do one full circle. And then just come back to center. Inhale, take your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze your hands and exhale through the mouth. Ah, just let them be heavy. We'll come into a gentle twist here as well on the chair, or again, you can do this on the floor. So right hand is gonna come behind you, close to your tailbone. And then the left arm can come against your right leg like a lever. So if you're sitting on the floor, it'll be the same. We'll start with their head facing forward. So right hand comes behind you, left arm against your right leg like a lever. Inhale, lengthen from the base of your spine. And as you exhale, we turn the abdomen and the rib cage to the right. Inhale, lift and lengthen from the base, create space between your vertebrae. Exhale, turning your chest and shoulders to the right. Inhale, lengthen, create space. And as you exhale, this time, if it's comfortable, you can turn your head to look out over the right shoulder. So you're not lifting the chin or dropping it. Chin is parallel to the floor. And once you arrive in your full version of this twist, just breathe into what shows up. So where do you feel the twist the most? Can you direct your breath into the back of your body Breathing into your back ribs on the inhale, expanding, softening on the exhalation. <clears throat> so keeping everything from the shoulders nice and steady, on the next inhale, we'll turn your head slowly towards the center of the room and then over, looking over your left shoulder. And on the exhale, then return it slowly back to look out over your right shoulder. We're just gonna do this one more time, nice and mindfully, just feeling into the movement. Then wait for your exhalation, the movement follows as you turn to look out over your right shoulder. We stay here, take a breath in, lengthen from the tailbone to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, we'll just slowly unwind. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, lengthen, lift up to the crown of your head. We'll take your left hand behind you, right arm like a lever against your left leg. Inhale, lengthen again. Exhale, turn abdomen and rib cage to the left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, turning chest and shoulders to the left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, finally turning the head to look out over your left shoulder, as long as this is comfortable for your neck. So both shoulders are broad. The jaw is soft. And notice where you feel the most sensations in the body this morning. And visualize your breath, breathing in and out through those sensations. Now keeping everything from the shoulders down, nice and steady. We'll inhale and slowly turn the gaze to look out over your right shoulder. Exhale slowly back to look out over the left. Inhale slowly to look out over the right. And last time, back over the left. 
We inhale, lengthen from the base of the spine. And as we exhale, we unwind. Good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take it down to, oh no, we're going to stand first. So if everyone come to stand on your mat, it's okay if I can only see half your body when you do this as well. It's hard to have the camera right for sitting and standing. So feet are hip distance apart. We're just going to soften our knees a little bit. So the, when I say hip distance, it means that the outer edges of the hips are lined up with the outer edges of your feet. We're just going to soften the knees here just a little bit, drop into the feet, relax your arms down by your side. As you inhale, we're going to reach your arms up and overhead, taking your hands into prayer. And as you exhale, bend the knees and fold forward. You're going to release the arms down towards the floor, release the head. If you have any problems with blood pressure or you feel unsteady here, you can take your forearms to your thighs. So you're sitting into a sort of a squat here and you can keep the head lifted or if it feels comfortable, you can drop the head a little bit. So this is just a modification for the standing forward fold. So it's like this. Otherwise, we're just going to pour the body over, fully lengthen the neck, release the head towards the floor, even just gently nodding the head, yes and no. Let the arms be really heavy here. You can even hold on to your elbows and just drop your head in between your arms. So there's quite a deep bend in the knees here. So we're not getting into the hamstrings. We're going to do that when we get to the floor. So we're really focusing on the length of the spine. Draw your abdomen in a little bit so that the fold comes from your hip crease. So you can think about your sit bones lifting up, fold from your hip crease, and then pour the body over. It's not about getting your legs straight. It's just about creating the length all the way from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. We're just going to take two more breaths here in our forward fold. And then we're going to press into our feet and slowly, mindfully come up, keeping the bend in your knees, just feeling into each part of the movement. You can do this close to a wall if you feel unsteady, and then exhale, shoulders down the back. Inhale, shoulders up to your ear, squeeze them up. Exhale, release them with a sigh. Now we're going to make our way down onto hands and knees. So if you're not comfortable placing your knees flat on the floor, you could take your rolled up blanket. We're coming into a tabletop. So we're spreading our fingers, middle fingers going to face forward. The knees are directly underneath the hips. We're coming into a moving cat. So on the exhalation, we draw the belly in, chin to chest, and slowly press the hips back towards the heels. They don't have to come anywhere near the heels. Just come as far as comfortable for you. Feel the length. And then bring your forearms onto the floor. So keep your forearms on the floor. As you inhale, bring the chin between your chest and then straighten the arms. So as you exhale, draw the belly in, press back, hips towards your heels, forearms are on the floor. Keep your forearms on the floor as you inhale, bring the chin between your wrists and then straighten the arms. We'll do two more like this. So exhale, rounding, pressing back, forearms onto the floor. Inhale forward and lifting. So you're coming back to a neutral spine. Okay, we'll do just one more, press back as far as comfortable for you, really feeling into the back of the body, forearms to the floor, and then slowly forward again, and we come back into our tabletop. So now we're going to work a little bit into our shoulders. So if you have your rolled up blanket, <laughs> you might need it here. So I'm going to show you first, if you just watch me first, and then I'll keep an eye on you guys. So we'll start by, I'll do it this way. We'll start by lifting your left arm up. So my left arm up and then I'm going to bring that left arm through. So underneath the right arm, this is called threading the needle. The palm is facing up and the side of the face can come to the floor. So if you're new to this, this might not feel comfortable. And that's where you can use your rolled up towel to place underneath your ear as you reach that left hand through. 
So the further the left fingertips reach away from you, the, the more you get into that space between your shoulder blades, the rhomboids at the back of the heart. So then you can either stay here or walk your right hand forward to go a little bit deeper into the right shoulder as well. So left hand is underneath, palm facing up. So I'll just demonstrate again, palm facing up, side of the face either on the floor or on a cushion or a rolled up towel. You can keep your right hand here or you can walk your right hand straight out from the right shoulder. Even just for a few breaths, notice what you feel. Making sure to relax your shoulder, your neck. And then when you're ready, slowly, mindfully make your way out. And we'll do the other side. So coming back onto hands and knees, also a variation is if you're comfortable in child's pose, you can sit back and do this. But this is usually more accessible to do it from tabletop. And we'll do it to the other side. So right hand is going to lift up, right hand threads underneath the left arm. The side of the face and the shoulder come to the floor or onto your cushion or your rolled up towel. You either stay here just looking out underneath your left elbow or you can walk your right hand all the way forward and that deepens the pose into the left shoulder as well. So primarily our focus here is to access the rhomboid muscles in between the shoulder blades and all the fascia around the back of the heart. So just breathing into what you're feeling, soften into it as much as you can. And then we're gonna make our way down onto your belly. So this is, if you can get onto the floor, onto your belly, this is a lovely sequence to really open up your shoulders and your chest. So if you come down to the floor, now make sure that you can see me. <coughs> so that when I guide you, you'll let you know what I'm doing. So, cause we're gonna be doing a few rounds of it. So I'll just do a total demonstration here to start. If you may need to look at where my hands are. I'm going to create a diamond shape with my hands. <clears throat> Elbows are on the floor, hands are on the floor. Index fingers are about two inches apart from each other. And then my feet are about shoulder distance apart. Now my legs are quite relaxed here on the floor. I'm going to place my forehead on the floor. I'll, I'll talk you through the first sequence. Then I'll talk you, I'm just going to demonstrate, sorry, the first sequence and then you guys can do it. So head is on the floor. I'm going to start by inhaling and just lifting your right elbow off the floor. So notice how my right hand stays on the floor. The only thing, my head is down. I lift the right elbow. As far as comfortable, I, I release it and I completely let go of the shoulder. So you could do this and you could still be contracting and holding the shoulder, but let go of it completely. So I'll just demonstrate that again. Inhale, I'm going to lift the elbow. Exhale, I'm going to release it down completely. And then when we'll do this three times on with the elbow, the next time as I inhale and lift the elbow, I follow that by lifting the head and looking out over the shoulder. And then as I exhale, I release the head and the elbow to the floor. So I'll just demonstrate that again. I inhale, lift the elbow, lift the head, look out over the shoulder, exhale, release completely. And then last part of the sequence is, I inhale, lift the elbow, lift the head, look out over the shoulder, and I bend the opposite leg, and then I release the shoulder, the head, and the leg to the floor. Okay, so you see what was important for you to see, you'd have no idea what I was saying. So if you guys get onto the floor, come onto your bellies, bring the forehead to the floor, I'll talk you through it. So completely relax down onto your belly, feet are about shoulder distance apart, the arms are in a diamond shape, completely relaxed. So the shoulders, there should be no tension or holding in the shoulders here. So keeping your palms on the floor, relax everything down.
And on your next inhale, just lift your right elbow off the floor. So just notice how that feels in the body with the right elbow. So the hand is on the floor, the elbow is deeply bent. Feel it, keep your head on the floor, exhale, release the elbow down, keep the head on the floor and let it go completely before repeating it. So as you inhale, lift that right elbow, notice your edge, notice how far it goes, what stops you going further. Exhale, release it down completely, let go of the arm, the shoulder, the head is relaxed. One more time like this on the right side, inhale, lift that right elbow, just the right elbow as you exhale, release it down completely. So the head is on the floor. Now we're still working on the right elbow. Inhale, lift the right elbow. This time lift the head and turn your gaze to look out over the right shoulder. Lift the head, turn the gaze like this. And then exhale, release the head, release the shoulder. Inhale, lift the elbow, lift the head, look out over the shoulder. Exhale, release the head, release the arm, the shoulder. One more time like this. Inhale, lift the elbow, lift the head, bend your left leg. So we're really confusing the body now. Exhale, release the leg, release the elbow, release the shoulder. We'll start on the other side. Inhale, lift the left elbow. Notice what sensations show up in this left shoulder as you do that. Exhale, release the elbow to the floor completely. Two more times like this. Start with the inhale, the movement follows. Lift the elbow. Exhale, release completely. Inhale, lift the elbow. Exhale, release completely. This time, lift the elbow, look out over your shoulder. Exhale, release the head, release the elbow. Two more like this. Inhale, lift the elbow, lift the head. Exhale, release completely. One more time like this, elbow, head and release. Completely let go of the shoulders, any holding there. Now we're gonna lift the elbow, lift the head, bend the opposite leg, so the right leg this time. Exhale, release the leg, the head, the shoulder. Two more like this, You're lifting the elbow, lifting the head, bending the opposite leg, and release. And just one more like this. And release. And now when you're ready, press your hands onto the floor, press yourself back into an extended child's pose. Again, it doesn't matter how far you move back here, just stretch the hips back towards your heels, just feel the full length in your spine. We'll take one or two breaths here and then we'll make our way onto your back for the rest of the practice this morning. So if you'd like a blanket on, on top of your mat, if you have one, just make sure you're comfortable, you're warm here. And we're gonna come, scoot the hips all the way to the heels and lower down onto your back. So the back of the head is on the floor. The shoulders are relaxed down by your side. So we're gonna start in a hip bridge here. So you're on the back of your body and moving a moving bridge. Making sure the toes are facing forward here, shoulders are away from the ears. As you inhale, press into your feet and lift the hips up. So what you're looking for is the knees to move straight towards the top of the mat and not out to the sides. So you're pressing into the four corners of each foot. And then we'll just exhale, release the hips. We can add in a little bit more now. So inhale, lift the hips up. Exhale, reach your arms overhead, keep the arms straight. Don't worry if they don't come all the way to the floor, just reach them in that direction. Take another breath in here. Exhale, release just the hips, keep your arms overhead. Inhale, stretch through your fingers. Exhale, release your arms down by your side. We're gonna continue this movement three more times. So inhale, press into the feet to lift the hips up, engage the glute muscles, the buttocks. Exhale, release the arms overhead. Take a full breath in here, stretching through your fingers, lifting your hips. Exhale, lower just the hips to the floor. Inhale, reach through the fingers. Exhale, lower the arms down by your side. 
Let the arms go completely. We'll do this two more times. Inhale, lift the hips up. Exhale, arms overhead. Inhale here, stay here. Exhale, release just the hips to the floor. Inhale, reach through the fingers. Exhale, release the arms down by your sides. One more like this. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, arms overhead. Inhale here. Exhale, release the, the hips. <laughs> Inhale, stretch through the fingers. Exhale, release the arms. So once you've completed this, we'll place the, the heels of your hands right into your hip crease. So that's where your thighs meet your hips. And just press the head of the arm bones away from you so that you can feel your lumbar spine, the lower back, just lengthening here. So you're just pressing the hands on the top of your thighs, pressing the head of the thigh bones away from you. Now we're going to bring our right knee into our chest and interlace the fingers just below the knee. As you inhale, let the right knee move away from you. So as you do this, you can feel the lower back arching, the arms are straight. As you exhale, draw the knee into your chest, bend your elbows, feel the lower back pressing into the floor. We'll do this three more times. So start with the breath, the movement follows. Inhale, press the knee away. Wait for the exhalation, draw the knee in. Again, really being present with where this shows up in the body. Two more like this, inhale, press away. Exhale, hug it in. Just one more like this, inhale, press away. Exhale, hug it in. The next bit is optional, so if there's anything happening in your neck that's not comfortable, you have an injury there, just keep the head on the floor. But if it feels okay, we can lift the chin to the chest, nose towards the inner knee. So we begin to open up the upper back as well, the neck, and then just release the head completely to the floor. Take your right hand behind your right thigh and take your left hand, place it on your left hip. Allow this right leg to fall out to the right hand side. So now our focus is the right inner thigh and the groin here. Let the shoulders be heavy on the floor and the back of the hips grounded here. Just to help feel a little bit of balance, we can let that left knee fall out to the side too. Now, if you're not feeling sensation in the right thigh, inner thigh, or in the hamstrings here, you can begin to hug that arm, the leg in with your right hand. And at the same time, press your thigh back out into the hand here. So we're looking for sensation in the right leg. Come to a place that you feel it. This is what we call our edge. And breathe into it. Now we'll slowly come back to center. So we're hugging that knee in. You can keep your right hand behind your thigh here. Keep your left hand on the left hip with the elbow on the floor. And we'll take your right sole of the foot to the ceiling. So this is a modified version of Ananda Balasana, happy baby. So you're drawing the knee down towards the outer chest or maybe the elbow or shoulder even. Sole of the foot is pressing straight up to the ceiling. You're hugging the leg in with the right hand and pressing the sole of the foot up. So you're creating a little bit of resistance, really good for getting into your hamstrings. So you can either stay here or if you're used to this practice, you can bring your elbow on the inside of your right knee and take your hand on the outside of the foot, but only if that feels right. So you're still going to begin to access the same part of the body. So knee down, foot up, breathe into what you're feeling.
And then we'll take your right ankle, place it across your left thigh. So this may be enough of a hip stretch here as you begin to open that right knee away from you. So what we're looking to access is the right thigh, the glute muscles, the buttock muscles here. So if you're not feeling anything here, you have the option to lift your left leg, take your hands behind the thigh or in front of the shin. But only do this if you can keep the head on the floor. So we're trying not to add any tension anywhere as we're opening up anything. So either three options, the foot on the floor, the hands behind the thigh or the hands in front of the shin. Begin to draw that left knee towards you if you have the left leg lifted and then open the right knee away from you so that focus is the right side. Make sure the shoulders are heavy moving down towards the floor, the back of the neck is long and the jaw is soft. Just breathing into what you're feeling here. You have an option to stay here. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper, we have that little bit of a core lift, chin to chest, nose towards your ankle. And then slowly lower the left foot to the floor and the head back to the floor. So I'm gonna give you two options for a twist and then we'll finish the right side. So you can either wrap your right leg over your left. So you're crossing them at the thighs, just a single wrap. This is one version, crossing that isn't for everybody. So if this doesn't feel right, I'm gonna show you something else we can do. You can take your arms into a cactus. So that means that the arms are bent at the elbows and the backs of the hands are on the floor. So this cactus can be as wide as comfortable for your shoulders. So it could be, your arms could be straight or just a soft bend or a deep bend. So the more opening in your shoulders, the deeper the bend. Now press down into your foot that's on the floor, lift the hips up, scoot them two inches to the right, place them back down. Once you do this, let the legs just fall to the left-hand side. It doesn't matter how far they fall. The head can be in the center if that's comfortable for the neck, or you can lift the head, turn the gaze to the right, place the head back down. So this is called twisted root. It's a really good way of twisting all the way from the base of the spine up to the, the neck here. If crossing your legs isn't for you this morning, what we're gonna do is take your feet to the very edges of your mat and then just let the legs fall to the left. So this is a wide windscreen wiper. So the feet are really wide, just drop the knees to the left and you can turn the gaze to the right. So just choose a twist that's comfortable for you. We're just gonna stay here for a few breaths. Inhale slowly back to center. We're going to unwrap the legs if they're twisted. Lift the hips, scoot them back into the midline and pause for a moment. <coughs> and then we're going to do the other side. So when you're ready, feet are hip distance apart. We'll take that left knee all the way into your chest and interlace your hands just below the knee. Just notice as you do this that the lower back begins to press into the floor. Just get a sense of what you're feeling in the left side now. Wait for your inhale. Let the knee move away from you as you straighten the arms and arch the back. And as you exhale, draw the knee into the chest and flatten the back. Three more like this.
Now take your left hand and place it behind your left knee or the left thigh. Let the left leg fall out to the side, right hand to your hip. Let the right knee fall out to the other side. So now we're focusing on the inner left thigh and the groin here. So create enough resistance to feel it. So if, if you allow it to fall out and you're feeling sensation here, stay here. If you need to go deeper, you create the resistance by hugging the leg in with the left hand and then pressing the thigh back out into the hand. Again, notice what sensations show up here. And then we'll slowly come back to center. Keep hugging that leg in with the left hand. Now the right knee is pointed to the ceiling. We're coming into Ananda Balasana this way. So as you hug the knee in, sole of the foot to the ceiling, and this is an option to stay here really good for getting into your hamstrings and inner hip. Or you can take the elbow on the inside of the knee and take your hands on the outside of the foot. You can still actively draw the knee down as you press the sole of the foot up. So come to a place where you feel sensation. That's as far as you need to go. And then just soften and breathe into it. Now we're going to hug the left knee back into your body just for one breath. Either hold it here, or if you like, you can bring chin to chest, nose to knee. And then release the head to the floor. Place your left ankle across your right thigh. Either stay here, just focus on opening that left knee up, or we can take your hands behind the thigh or in front of the shin. So each side may feel different on the body. That's perfectly normal. So just adapt and modify so that you're not actually placing the ankle on the kneecap itself, it's above the knee, and that you can feel sensation in the left hip and the left thigh here. Just checking in that the head is not lifted, there's no tension in the neck, the shoulders, they're heavy and grounded. So you can either stay here just breathing into the sensations you're feeling in the left hip and the thigh. Or if you'd like to go that little bit deeper and it's comfortable for your neck, you can lift your head, chin to chest, nose towards your ankle. And now lower the head slowly to the floor and the right foot to the floor. For the first twist, we just wrap your left thigh over your right now and squeeze your thighs together. Take your arms back into the cactus so you can feel them heavy. Back of the arms on the floor, back of the hands on the floor. And if it's not comfortable to bend the arms, you can straighten them as well. Lift your hips up, scoot them two inches to the left this time, and we'll release the legs. Just let them fall to the right hand side. And again, if it's not comfortable for them to fall fully, this is where your rolled up towel can be useful to place them there. Lift your head to, and turn the gaze to the left or keep the head in the center if that feels better. So this is one version. The other version was that wide-legged twist of feet on the very edges of the mat and we just let the knees fall to the right and the gaze can turn to the left.
Now slowly, mindfully bring the legs back to the center. If, the, if you've got your hips over to the left, we're gonna scoot them right back into the center again. For a moment, just pause with the feet on the floor. So if your legs were wide, just bring them into hip distance. We're gonna lift up into one hip bridge here. So as you lift the hips again, this time squeeze the buttocks a little bit tighter and then slowly release the hips to the floor. We'll draw your knees into your chest, wrap your arms around your legs. As you do this, press the back of the body into the floor. And now lifting your chin to chest, nose towards your knees as you squeeze and tighten and hold everything. And then as you exhale, you can soften and arrive into stillness for just a couple of minutes of Shavasana. So if it's comfortable to stretch your legs out, you can take them out nice and wide. You can take the arms away from the body, palms facing up. You could even lift the shoulders, walk them down the back a little, lift the head and reset it, rest it on the floor. But for many, stretching your legs out is uncomfortable. And a nice modification for this would be to take your feet really wide on the mat, bend the legs, and just let the knees fall in towards each other so that you can release the hips here. So just taking a deep breath in through your nose and just sigh it out. So just giving the full weight of your body to the floor. Just feeling yourself being held and supported. Just feeling the effects of gravity working through you. Just feel the muscles, just loosening their grip on the bones. Just feeling the breath moving through you easy, unrestricted. Feeling the gentle beating of your heart. And the pulsing of prana, life force, energy, chi. feeling the space that you created with your practice. Space in and around your body. Space between your breaths and your thoughts.
Now inviting a deeper breath into your body. <clears throat> Introducing some small movement back into your hands, your feet, maybe your head and neck. And then taking a full body stretch. So whatever way feels right for your body this morning, maybe a sigh or a yawn or some sound that would like to escape. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, if you're on the floor still, just placing your feet on the floor and just rolling onto your right side. And then we're gonna stay on the right side just for this morning's reading. So I do this after each car. Um, so resting your hands underneath your head, if you don't have a pillow, you can stay on your right side, get nice and comfortable, just for a minute. <coughs> so this morning's reading, value the power of clear thought. Value your mind and the power of conscious clear thought. All this talk about opening the heart has not been to discount or devalue the power of conscious clear thought or of opening our minds and expanding our consciousness. A gift, a benefit from opening our heart is increased clarity of mind and thought. As we clear the pathway to the heart by feeling, expressing and releasing old emotions, we will clear the path to the mind. Just as the body is connected to the mind, so is the heart. A cramped body can cause fuzzy thinking, but so can a clogged heart. To attempt to clearly and consciously, to attempt to think clearly and consciously with the heart closed may not work. It may even prove frustrating and difficult. Don't think so hard, the wise old man gently instructed me. You're hurting your head and your thinking isn't becoming clear. Relax, stop trying so hard, open your heart, then your thinking will clear. The mind, he reminded me, is connected to the heart. If you're feeling cloudy and confused and can't get the answers, stop trying so hard. Move your body and clear your physical energy, then try opening your heart you may see a delightful result. Without trying or forcing, your thinking clears and it becomes clear without the frustration of trying to force thoughts, ideas, or thought patterns. It happens almost magically and quite naturally. The mind is connected to the heart. Value the power of conscious, clear thought. Value your mind and its power by valuing the power and wisdom of an open heart. And so when you're ready, just slowly, mindfully, just bring yourself to a comfortable seat. And then just keep your eyes closed. We'll bring our hands to the heart center. We'll take a breath in and lengthen. And as we exhale, we bow. Namaste.